I said at the beginning of the week that this was going to be a historic U.S. Nationals one to remember unforgettable. Boy oh boy do I love being right about things. This U.S. Nationals is in every sense of the word what I expected it to be, what the hype lives up to, and for anybody that thinks Indy isn't back then I honestly mean go watch something else. This was by far one of the most, one of the coolest U.S. Nationals in terms of storylines, in terms of looks, in terms of excitement, in terms of unpredictability. This lives up to the hysteria and the mystique that Indianapolis has and it's what makes it such a prestigious event. We have a lot to cover across the four pro categories including a lot of storylines that may involve what happens later on in the season. Not only that but we have four winners. We have highlight videos and we, of course we get to hear from our winners. So let's go right into the brackets in pro stock motorcycle. Gage Herrera, I've said for the entire week that the sky is blue, the grass is green, Gage Herrera is number one. Well, apparently the grass is blue today. <laughs> he ran he ran rough shot over the entire pro stock motorcycle field from the looks of it. He ran through Corey Reed in round number one, Ron Tornow, who had an incredible performance. He got another round one victory, this time against Gianna Evaristo. Moves on to the semifinals to face off against Matt Smith. Fails to really get out of the first gear when he wanted to. It just bogs down the bike. Matt Smith drives around him and gets the win here at the U.S. Nationals. Moves on to the final. Face off against Hector Rana Jr., Hector Red Lights. After going through Angie Smith, after going through Kelly Klontz and Steve Johnson. No, he went through Chris Bostick. So again, just an absolutely fantastic way to have Pro Stock Motorcycle. The guy that I thought was going to dominate Gay Trera doesn't win. The guy who I thought was going to be the person that was going to take over that, the guy who I said back in the Padawan, I was really about to puff up my chest and say, what did I say? The guy who, the only person who can capitalize on Vance and Hines' mistakes and get the win has seems to be Hector Rana Jr. Well, not today, because the only person who could defeat Hector Rana Jr. is himself, because he red lit and lost the U.S. Nationals. And I know that one's going to sting, and I know that one's going to hurt. Looking in the pro stock, Matt Harford, number one qualifier, round number one, goes through Mason McGehe. Round number two, goes through Cammy Caruso. But I want to point this out real quick. Christian Quadro was the first pair out. He faced off against Camry Caruso. During the burnout, a cap came off the back end of the car and leaked a bunch of oil all down the track to about the 300 foot mark. Just absolutely pissed it down and just left the track a mess. They spent about almost half an hour to an hour cleaning that track up and then what ends up happening then on, the left lane was never the same again. Whatever they did to it, whatever they changed with it, with having to clean it up, just absolutely butchered the track and changed it. We still had a lot of winners in that lane, but nothing was ever the same. Matt Harford goes through Miss McGehe, goes through Cameron Caruso, goes through Erica Enders, who is probably going to be his biggest challenge the entire way, and then makes it to the finals. His opponent is Fernando Quadra Jr., goes through Bo Butner III, Troy Coughlin Jr., who was a victim of that left lane massacre because of the fact he was the first pair to go out after that, and that absolutely destroyed any chances he had of conquering the U.S. Nationals. Goes into the semifinals. Kyle Koretsky, same situation. Ends up having to be put into that lane against Fernando Quadra Jr. and then loses it there and then goes on to the finals. And then Matt Harford versus Fernando Quadra Jr. Matt Harford scores his second win of the season and his first title at the big go. In Funny Car, Robert Hyde was my pick to win this. If you looked on Twitter for my Bracket Bonanza pick, which by the way, go sign up for that. That was a lot of fun to just follow along with. Goes up against Paul Lee, beats him. Tom Wilkerson beats him. Ron Caps. Oh, hey, check this out. Loses to Ron Caps. Robert Hyde, I believe he. Actually, if I remember correctly, he had lane choice and still lost in the preferred lane. Robert Height and Ron Caps, 3999 to a 3965, sees the snake go back to the finals 50 years after his historic win at the Nationals. Goes up against J.R. Todd, who went through Blake Alexander, went through Bob Tasket the third, number two qualifier, was such a dominant force all weekend, and then Cruz Pedregon, an incredible weekend for him, making it to the semifinals at the U.S. Nationals. But what ends up happening, at the U.S. Nationals, in semifinal round, he goes to pull the brakes to go stop the car, he says he feels nothing. What ends up happening is he goes to make the turn onto the top end where all the cars are. He says he saw that he had the option of hitting a top field dragster or going into the grass. So he went into the grass. We ended up hearing from Coletta Motorsports that a brake pressure sensor failure on the master cylinder failed. 
and that is what caused the issues. What ends up happening, they had to tow the car back. They lost about probably 10 to 20 minutes of time trying to fix that. And then all three teams from Langdon, from Coletta, even t people from DeJoria, all hands on deck to get that car ready for the finals. They use the same body, they use the same chassis, and that car was ready to go by the time the call was made to go to the lanes. Goes into the final rounds against Ron Caps, and Ron Caps goes back to back at Indianapolis. The man who is on a Dale Senior style story of spending so many years trying to score a US national victory now has two. In top fuel, Steve Torrens was one of the strongest guys to win the U.S. Nationals. Round number one against Will Smith, takes him down, goes to Sean Langdon, beats him. Doug Coletta, another strong competitor, goes through him and goes into the final round. His opponent, the guy who almost was not even in the show to begin with, Antron Brown. What more can you say about the man that has not won five U.S. Nationals? Going into Q5, was not in the show. What ends up happening? He ends up going against Brittany Force, wins that, goes against Clay Milliken, beats him, goes against Justin Ashley, who had his number almost the entire season up to this point, and it goes through him, and then in the final round, faces off against the four-time champion Steve Torrance, and wins it. The impossible of the man who almost was lucky enough just to be in the show is now a five-time U.S. Nationals winner. We have video highlights to go through and we have interviews to talk about as well. Let's get into it and then wrap up the historic 69th Dodge Power Brokers U.S. Nationals. Performance-wise, they come in within 200s. Arana had a slightly better reaction time. And at the starting line, it's Arana going red. He was 15 green in the semis. He goes red. And Matt Smith has won for the first time. And boy, it's been a long time in the 2023 season. 686 for 198 miles an hour. The Denzo flag is flying. And this guy just made the move he needed to make for the countdown. Based on what you just said, it doesn't seem that the gap between you guys and Gage would be as much as it maybe looks from the outside. Yeah, I mean, if you look, let's look at Sonoma last, you know, when the last race we were at, he went 72-8 and I went 72-9, you know, but we 60-footed, I went 104. If that's the problem, I just can't do that. And he can do that all the time, whether it's hot, cold, whatever. And uh, that, that's where I struggled this weekend. I just, I don't think I have the right gear ratio to make it 60-foot like that when we got that bad weather. Um, will I have it made? Yes, I'll have it made. And if it happens again, you know, we'll be prepared. But um, like I said, this is a new program. You know, I, I got plenty of stuff for the V twin side, but I'm stuck on the Suzuki this year and I'm going to make it work one way or the other. And I've already told somebody if I can pull this thing off and win seven of these things, I will not race next year at all. Why? You sound like your dad. Why? No, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm retired, <laughs> but I will not race. I, I will take the year off and focus on Gianna and Angie to try to get them wins and a championship. So obviously this year you started off with the new Suzuki, and they had to wait a long time to get this first Wally of the season. With how hard you worked to get to this point, how vindicating is it to win the U.S. Nationals again? And how much of a momentum shifter is it going into the countdown, trying to cut down that band's time period from their stable? Well, I come into this race. Um, I, I already said that Gage was going to be the biggest loser of this race. And uh, no matter if he won the race or he lost first round, he lost the most points. We all, the whole class gained on him. Now, if we can just keep that momentum going like we just had, then we have a shot at this. You know, thankfully we have a countdown because, you know, we wouldn't have a shot if, 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 if we didn't have this countdown. So it's going to be interesting. We got to jump on them at Reading and Charlotte, and that's why I'm bringing Chip out for those two races because if we don't jump on them and get them out early, then you know we're not going to have a shot at it. Nobody will. So I'm going to do my part to try to win this thing and become a seven-time champ and go where nobody else has gone and post up motorcycle, and we'll see what happens. Probably back. Uh, just as a follow-up to that question, uh, there's been times that you've been the biggest loser with the reset. Did you ever think that you would say? be a fan of the countdown i've always said that you know if you're number one coming in you, you hate the countdown if you're five six seven eight you're you're the biggest fan of the countdown you know i'm coming in number two in points but the biggest thing is he had such a huge lead that i think the whole class is a fan of the countdown so we're gonna see what happens and uh if we can like i said like I, i'm just saying it again if we can 60 foot i think we can run with them without further
One last deep breath. And roll it into stage. Matt's ready. Fernando. Away on the green. Quadra gets in trouble. It rattles the tire. And Matt Hartford is the U.S. Nationals champion. 6.624. 206.57. And look at him whooping it up on the starting line. You're at the top and you can see the emotion of having this win be realized for you. For people who may not understand, just talk about what Indy means to you, not just as a race car driver, but as just a fan in general of a lot of sport. What does it mean to come to Indianapolis and get at the U.S. Nationals? First year I came here would have been early 80s. I don't, I don't remember the exact year. And I sat in the stands and I watched, I watched the cars. I walked around the pits and it is certain, I think it res can resonate with everybody in this room. There's times that you reflect upon your own childhood and say, wow, how did I get here? I'm now the guy that people are rooting for or rooting against in the stands. And I was, that was the kid in the stands. You know, they said the U.S. Nationals 1970. Well, I was minus two then. Um, but, or pro stock at the U.S. Nationals. When you're a kid, you, you're impressionable. And I was very impressionable at that young age that I wanted to be in a pro stock car. So the emotions to come to Indy are extremely high. I'm not saying that winning Norwalk wasn't awesome. That, that ice cream scoop is really cool. But this is Indy. And regardless of how we look at it as another race that you want to win, I'm telling you around the world, Indy is known as you win Indy, you've done something. And it hasn't set in yet. It will. And I'm, I'm not sure when, but it will. with a six of 323 miles an hour. 50 years after Don the Snake Perdome on the U.S. Nationals in Funny Car, he once again has a car carrying his name in the winner's circle. Bruno, this is incredible. You talked about on Friday when you unveiled this car that you were gonna have to try and check your emotions hoping you didn't see this car when you are inside of it just to try and keep yourself in check. Now that you've realized that you've won this event, which was a goal from the start, what? Reflect on the weekend, on what has meant to you emotionally just to get to do this and now achieve the win again. Like, just yeah, I, I did a poor job um, because I, I was hoping I wouldn't see the outside of the car in it, but I could see a tinge of the, the hood and the yellow, which I never see in my normal car. And uh, I was trying to separate myself a little more, you know, and not get emotional about trying to do better because Snake was here and it's hard not to. No matter what, no matter what anybody says, it's like, yeah, you can focus or you can separate things, but you can't. It means so much to me. So, um, yeah, it was hard to uh, to do that. And I, it took into Sunday before I got over it a little bit. And final round, believe it or not, they lowered the body to go up the stage. We were rushed so much to get up here. Uh, I didn't have time to get real super nervous for a final, which is good. And uh, they dropped the body and I could see that yellow and I looked up and I said, don't look at the big screen. There were snakes in and they're on the big screen. I was like, shit, don't, told yourself not to look up there. And uh, it was a quick tree for both JR and I and we just took off. And um, so I, I didn't have time to get a little more emotional, thank God. But yeah, it, it's, it was, I don't care how long you've been doing it. I don't care, uh, you know, how good you are or maybe I'm not as good as some, but I, I just could not separate that until today you know and just get over that part and um, you just don't this doesn't happen you just don't put this together and hope that it's going to have success and you end up winning 50 years later after you won funny car i mean he, you know one of my biggest mentors thanks to him too but one of my biggest early funny car men, mentors is Roland Leong. taught me a ton um I would not be where I'm at without Roland. When Roland went to work for Snake um, and took me under his wing, he won the 1965 U.S. Nationals driving for Roland Leong, a very young Roland Leong. That's the year I was born. So then, it, to win it again 50 years ago in Funny Car, um, just think about it. Think all the stuff that lined up today. It's just crazy, crazy. Yeah. Amazing. Just the history. Yeah, it's like A.J. Foyt, Mario Andretti shit. Like just. Think about it. 
you know, this town is built on that kind of history in motorsports, and you know, there's something to be said about all that. I do want to say thank you, um, Mark, everybody at Dodge. Uh, they gave us the best appearing car, which was cool. Um, it's the Dodge race, and that was as classy as it gets for Dodge to do that. For such a cool car, but knowing it was their race, um, very classy, and uh, I can't thank Dodge enough for doing that. The number 15 qualifier has been to 19 final rounds in the history of Top Fuel. That's 969 races. Steve Torrance was number one. Can the Capco boys cap off the regular season with a win? Antron's driving away. He did it. 377.9, 328 miles an hour. Caps goes back to back. Antron goes back to back. Those guys went slogging through the mud for four rounds of qualifying. Got the car in the show and have just won the U.S. Nationals again. First time you won this back in 2000, you were a young kid having to beat Dave's bike in order to get your first. Now you won your fifth. Just think about what are the emotions getting to win this multiple times over at this event? What does Indy mean to you? What does it mean to now have it five times? And I believe you're damn near about to tie Dave himself for the record that he has at U.S. National Victory. What does it mean to you? You know, Dave was a special guy in my, in my place because he taught me so many, like, attention to details. And not just how to ride the bike, but to work on motorcycles and work on anything and pay attention to everything that's around you. Exert other people, learn from them, and be better each and every time. And uh, this race here has uh, always been, it's just something just to qualify for this race. That's what people forget about. We almost didn't qualify for the U.S. Nationals this weekend. You know why? Everybody shows up and shows out. People can't race a whole season like they race the U.S. Nationals. Jim Dunn will tell you, he raced the U.S. Nationals like John Force raced the U.S. Nationals. Brand new engine block, brand new heads, clutch to the T, car coming out the best it can be. That's what everybody brings to the table at the U.S. Nationals. That's why you have, the bump was 82 on top fuel. 82. And people are running that in the heat of the day. Look at TJ Zizzo coming out dropping a bomb of 373. Buddy Hall running at 85, 82. All these guys and girls are coming to this race because if you can't win a championship, you want to win Indy. And to get in the field, and look at all the people we raced today. We raced Brittany Force first round. That's the final round. Who we raced second round? We raced, we raced Clay Milliken. I went, okay, two dropped the bomb. He almost didn't make the show either. But he dropped the bomb first round. Took out a heavy hitter. Then who we raced in the semis? Justin. 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 Yeah. Cutting it down. That boy don't cut the tree down. He pulls the roots up with it. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not playing. I'm serious as a heart attack right now. Can't make this stuff up. Then he raced Steve Torrance four-time champion. And me and Steve, I'll tell you something. When before he won his championships, you know, he's come to my trail all the time. Maybe what you doing, how you doing. Talking to our team on how they race. I felt like I was Apollo Creed teaching Rocky Balboa. Then he came out and won four championships. Gutting people. Shooting them up, shooting them down. You see how he gets out the car? And he raced him in the final. And the craziest part of about it is, I got in shape this year with a little special motivation. Getting in shape. Getting in shape. I was a little out of shape and got pushed to get in shape. And uh, I got in. I'm just letting Steve know that Apollo still got some tricks underneath his sleeve. And we raced in that final round. I dropped the hammer down. 40, he was 42. But we actually made a run. That's that Karate Oswald Mason connection with that Macro Tools boys. And uh, that's what it's gonna to take to win this year. You have to give it every ounce of what you got. Bring the kitchen sink, bring the plumbing, even pull the wires out the wall. Shoot, I'm even gonna put bring the septic tank with me too. I'm, my family specialized in that, you know that? 
Again, I've been saying it since the start of the week that this was going to be historic U.S. Nationals. And by every word of the letter, this event lived up to the hype. And it is just the entire way I can describe how the 2023 NHRA season has been. If you're not watching the NHRA Camper Gold Drag Racing Series this season, then you are truly missing out because this has honestly been probably one of the best seasons of the events of the series history. And I genuinely do believe you need to at least watch one race. If you live near a track, go to it. Just enjoy it and embrace it. So again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for watching. A year ago, we started this journey, and now we find ourselves here yet again. So again, I want to bring these two guys in. If it wasn't for you guys, we probably would be sitting in the grandstands burning our ass off. Now instead, we're in the media center still burning our ass off, but now in a lesser sense because of the fact that now we get to talk about race cars for a living. So without you guys, we wouldn't be here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow along on all social media pages, Mighty Mac 03, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and threads all over the place. We've been posting pictures all week of what he's been doing. We have B-roll footage and storylines from what he was doing. And it's going to keep going. We're going to be back in a couple weeks for the IMSA Brick... What is it? Battle of the... Battle on the Bricks. Battle on the Bricks. Hi-Rec.com. Battle on the Bricks. Yeah, you see, they stole the name from uh, Battle at the Brickyard that USAC had for the karting event. Sounded familiar. Yeah, it is not familiar. We'll be back for that. And then God knows what else is going to happen. We have a lot of plans in store. So again, follow us on social media pages. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Just get the word out for drag racing. Because again, if you're not watching this season, you're surely missing out. So from all of us here at Mighty Mac, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, this has been Mighty Mac, and we will see you at Indy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Perfect intro.